So do we have Second Amendment or even First Amendment rights in Canada? I ask this question because I often hear people um, say things like, in Canada we don't have Second Amendment rights or we don't have um, co um, a, con a constitution that gives us those rights. But I want to ask, I want you to ask yourself, do you believe that these rights are limited to the borders of a certain country? I mean, it seems like people talk about them as if they're, they exist within the borders of one country or another country, and they're given to them by governments or politicians. And is that really what you're trying to say? Or do you actually believe that they are inalienable rights given to you by God. Which one is it? And so this is where we need to change the language that we're using and not say, oh, we have these rights in this place, but not in that place. The question is, do you have these rights as a human being made in the image of God? That's it, period. It doesn't matter where you are. Because as a human being, you have been given certain rights that cannot be taken away from you. And so it's not about, okay, do you have these rights in the United States or in Canada? It's, are those rights recognized either by a constitution or by the government or whatever else it may be? Because we need to change the conversation and start acting as if, and talking as if we actually have these rights. And even behaving as if we actually have these rights. And not as if we're trying to beg the government to give us those rights. But rather demanding that they ought to respect those rights and... And informing them very clearly that if they don't respect the, those rights, uh, they are opposing God himself, who has given us those rights as human beings. And so this is why we need to take a, a stand on something that is higher than government. And I believe the only way that we will win this battle for our rights and freedoms in Canada and in other places as well, is by standing on the Word of God. And whatever God says, no man has a right to contradict. And if we look, for example, like Exodus 22, it gives us very clearly the right to defend ourselves. Um, it says, if the thief is caught while breaking in, and is struck so that he dies, there will be no blood guiltiness on his account. That's Exodus chapter 22, verse 2. And so, having said all that, I think there are certain things, even in Canadian law, that if taken to their logical conclusions, actually defend our rights to, say, our rights to bear arms, our rights to our freedom of speech, all those things. The problem is that the politicians don't take those to their logical conclusions. Uh, they stop short of that, and they do that on purpose. Um, so if we were take, to take a look, for example, let's go to... The Canadian Bill of Rights, and we have to start from the beginning because it's so important. Because it, it actually lays down a pretty good foundation, which is surprising for a Canadian law, a, a piece of Canadian law. And it says the Parliament of Canada, affirming that the Canadian nation is founded upon principles that acknowledge the supremacy of God the dignity and worth of the human person and the position of a family in a society of free men and free institutions. So, first of all, where do you think they took that from? I mean, of course, this is... This is from the Christian religion. 
It's so clear. I mean, what, do you think they, they got this from... Do you think they had Buddha in mind? I mean, the dignity and worth of a human person. Where does that come from, if not from Genesis? Where it explicitly says that God made man in his own image. That's a Christian concept that the human being has a dignity and worth that is far above that of animals and other created things in this world. And that's the foundation it lays down for our human rights and freedoms. And then it says, affirming also that man and institutions remain free only when freedom is founded upon respect for moral and spiritual values and the rule of law. Now, which law do you think they were referring to again? If not the highest law, the law of God. I mean, what, do you think they were referring to the laws of politicians that can change every few years? When it talks, when in the same sentence, it talks about spiritual values and moral. No, this is the moral law of God that is being referenced here, at least implicitly. And then it says, in being desirous of enshrining these principles and the human rights and fundamental freedoms derived from them in a bill of rights which shall reflect the respect of Parliament for its constitutional authority and which shall ensure the protection of these rights and freedoms in Canada, something which unfortunately is not being done these days. These rights are not being respected, they are not being protected, they are not being recognized. And, and so I'm going to skip ahead um, to um, to the part where it lists those rights. The right of the individual to life, liberty, security of the person, and enjoy enjoyment of property, and the right not to be deprived thereof except by due process of law. Now, the thing that is absolutely, uh, it, it, it's just, uh, in, I don't even know how to find the right word. It infuriates me. Is how when Canada was going through all the legal battles of, about abortion, they actually used this security of the person to legalize murdering babies by abortion. To basically justify abortion on demand in the end. And it's ridiculous. Because if you actually take this to its logical conclusion, it actually demands that we protect the pre-born. But we can also apply this to things like the right to bear arms. If we have the right to life, then we have, what does this look like? Let's say if we are out in the woods and we just want to have a hike and but we know that there's bears almost everywhere in Canada. We could face an attack from something like a bear or a cougar. Okay, if you have the right to life, you have also the right to defend yourself from such an attack from a wild animal. And if you don't have the right to have a weapon, like a gun, Well, then, is your right to life really being respected? Or what about the security of person right there? Again, you're out in the woods, and you're just walking along, and the government did not let you have a handgun on you, and so you're unarmed. How does that respect the, the right to security of person? Are you going to call the cops right then and there when this is going to happen in milliseconds? And that bear is going to charge you because it happens to have cubs around? And then, not only that, but enjoyment of property. And this, this 
speaks directly to things like gun confiscations. If you have not committed a crime, the government has no right to do that. And again, where does this come from? It comes from the Ten Commandments, which condemns theft. And when the government says that you have to bring back your gun, and of course they lie to you, they tell you they're going to give you back money for it, but they always get that money back through taxes. They just raise the taxes to get that money back. So it, it's, it, they don't respect your property rights. And um, anyways, and then the right not to be deprived thereof except by due process of law. And of course, again, that's not happening. And what, and what the government always wants to do is they want to punish people who have committed no crime for the sins of people who have committed a crime, such as a school shooting or something like that. And again, that's something that the Bible condemns. You do not punish the innocent for the crimes of those who are guilty. That is wrong. And uh, that applies to so many other, I mean, this is again, like, okay, trying to justify abortion because uh, cases of rape. Well, okay, instead of punishing the guilty person who deserves the death penalty, you're gonna punish the child that is conceived of rape. So now, in, now, that you, have, now you have two victims. You have the woman who was raped, but now you're going to tell her that the way to deal with this is to produce another victim and murder the child conceived by rape, who, who, and it's not his or her fault. That's not justice. And, and so we, we need to start with the right foundations if we want to have our rights and freedoms respected in Canada. And so I'm going to continue. The right of the individual to equality before the law and the protection of the law. Again, this applies to this. If we say that it's wrong to murder and that murderers should at least be in jail, although really they deserve the death penalty after due process. Um, if it's wrong to murder one of us, then it's also wrong to murder the smallest of humans, the preborn ch children. And of course now it's going insane with the whole maids program where the dignity and life of maybe people who are who the government deems mentally insane or something like that. It, 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 this is going down a very dark path. This is how Hitler started. Anyways, if we keep on going, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly and association and freedom of the press. And of course, freedom of assembly would require the freedom to travel because how are you gonna assemble if you can't travel? And, and so there you have it. So there we have something that at least partially reflects the word of God. Now, most a lot of Canadian laws are very, very much opposed to the law of God. And, and it needs to be challenged. And that's the only way that we can consistently and I think su successfully challenge those laws. Otherwise, it's just a word of one man's opinion against another man's opinion. And you're going to get nowhere like that. We must start standing on the firm foundation of God's word, who has given us inalienable rights, and he has made those rights clear within the pages of his word.